You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Now, if you like what we do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. Almost a year ago, Amelia reviewed the venue in the active trim. Now we have the one below it simply called Venue and it's an entry level version and it costs around 24,000. When we tested it for the first time, it was a novelty in the Hyundai lineup, replacing the Accent, which was a very different vehicle, definitely not a crossover and also reminiscent of the old days of Hyundai. Now, let's be honest, it was pretty clearly time for the Accent to move on. Enter Venue, the name that means the place where something happens. Hmm. While something is definitely happening in there compared to Accent, the car is more modern, elevated, and has some of the latest tech available. It's an obvious step up in an entry-level model. So here we are expecting affordability and good value for money, but not really the moon and stars, or Mars, I guess, because that's trendy nowadays, right? Let's take a visit to this venue to see if it really is the place to be. The boxy styling holds up well. People love the raised seating position of SUVs for comfort and visibility. And those creaky back issues. A big improvement from the compact accent. The venue still looks trendy and has that reassuring SUV appearance, although miniaturized. The car is a subcompact SUV and it shows, measuring around 4 metres in length and 1.7 metres in width. The side makes it look more serious and also increases interior space, which also improves it over its predecessor. The resemblance to the Kona is obvious, as is the general Hyundai design language. I'm honestly looking forward to seeing the facelifted venue. I imagine it will have some cool new design language. The grille looks great and the angular side has bulges and creases in all the right places. Now, if you were designing a car for this subcompact category, the main two things that you really need to focus on is making sure it doesn't look outdated or like something from an original Lost in Space episode. The venue ticks both boxes and the added interior space is a nice bonus. But we'll get to that. Let's see what's under the bonnet first. There is one engine regardless of the trim, and it could either be paired with a six-speed manual or automatic. It's a 1.6-litre multi-point naturally aspirated inline four with a host of tech that is designed to make it both more efficient and give this tiny engine a bit more power. The engine produces 90 kilowatts of power and 151 newton meters of torque, the latter figure available from just under 5,000 revs. The engine can run on 91 run or E10. Yes, it does work, but don't expect miracles. All that tech basically gets you a bit better power and a bit better fuel efficiency. So what's it like to drive? The good news is that the power delivery is even and smooth. There are none of those sudden shudders. I mean, unless you really floor your foot. That is good, and novice drivers or their parents or their grandparents will appreciate this. The bad news is that there's just not that much power to deliver. Off the mark as well, you'll really feel that lack of power if you floor it. Uh, overtaking? It's usually pretty good, as long as you're not trying to be the winner. But although the venue never really feels powerful, it will be sufficient for most conditions it will encounter. Suspension is a little hard, which is what we would expect from this segment. Short wheelbase and a low price have to affect the suppleness. Now the Aussie suspension tune does help. It's one of the more comfortable cars in its class, but you do feel the bumps, especially with these small wheels. One great thing is that it weighs just 1165 kilos. It makes the car feel more nimble and the engine doesn't have to work so hard. You also have the three drive modes and you get a noticeable kick with that sports mode. Although it's more like a matchbox car than a rally car. And for those who prefer to drive like it's Sunday every day, Eco will save you gas and allow you to be a full-time Miss Daisy. But not so good if you have to merge into traffic quickly. Now, if you drive your car in conditions that are less common in Australia, you'll be happy to know it has three attraction options, mud, snow and sand. So did Hyundai fail with the engine? Now while more engine options would obviously be welcome, I still feel in this trim, this engine would still be the most popular. This engine will suit most of the customers shopping in this market. Performance is not their priority and they will be driving them in the city. Now it's zippy enough and it's also gonna be cheap and easy to maintain. It's just that that smaller turbo engine would just be nice. 
The interior may be the best part of the venue. It's got a nice simple design, ergonomic layout and more space than you would expect from the exterior dimensions. Sure, the front gets enough space, that's the industry standard, but the back as well has lots of space for this segment. Now I'll hop in the back in a second, but let me cover some of those features here. The touchscreen is 8 inches and is standard in all three trim levels. Also standard, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I love its placement and it's easy to use. The only thing we've been finding is that there's some wireless connectivity dropout issues with Apple CarPlay. Of course, you get all the standard storage options and cup holders, and I have to point out how much I like the central console is elevated. Having the gear lever so close to the steering wheel is great for ease of reach, even if the car isn't particularly sporty. Now let's get back into the rear seats. Now being a subcompact, the rear is normally for kids or shopping, but you can actually drive two adults back here quite comfortably. Headroom is particularly generous, while legroom gives a hint of the outside dimensions. Unfortunately, like many subcompacts, you don't get air vents, cup holders or USBs, but there are bottle holders in the door. Materials are predictably okay, considering this isn't a top trim. The boot is pleasantly surprising. Even though 355 litres is not massive, but it's a lot bigger than most of its competitors and almost as big as cars one class higher. Now the boot has an adjustable floor so you can actually move it up to a higher level so it's in more ease of reach. And another thing to note is that some of that size and space comes from that low floor. There's a, so there is a prominent low loop here. Of course, you can split and fold the second row seats to get even more space. Hyundai make their cars safe, and luckily the venue is a Hyundai. Even this entry level is very good with ABS, brake assist, EBD, hill start assist, vehicle stability management, traction control, driver attention warning, forward collision avoidance, lane keep assist, rear view camera with dynamic guidelines and similar. In fact, the very top trim adds just a few safety features over the entry level one, including rear parking sensors, blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert. So after a year on the market, how is the venue holding up? It's actually holding up really well. It proved a worthy competitor to the likes of the more established vehicles like Mazda CX-3. With all this for under 25,000, the venue really has something to offer buyers. Of course, the entry level trim misses out on some comfort perks and materials. But if you are looking for a practical, up-to-date and affordable city transportation, the venue is a good offer. I reckon even more so if you're a novice driver or a safe and steady drive is your preference. However, if you want performance, hybrid or electric powertrains or special comforts, the venue won't be the top of your list. You know what? I feel like it's we, the buyer, who are going to decide if the venue gets those. If it becomes popular, it's likely to get more options to cater to a larger segment of the market, as Hyundai seem to listen to their consumers and flow with their demands. Right now, the big pluses are the price, practicality, safety, and the interior space. So if small, affordable urban transport is what you seek, you need to check out the venue. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So on my wish list would probably be a 1.1 litre turbo. That would be fun. But considering this car is so light, I actually find that it's kind of zippy. Have you driven it? Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you in the next review.